How's it going guys and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be checking out the location of all five of the headless mini bosses in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. First of all, what rewards are we actually going to obtain by killing these headless as they are not needed for any of the trophies in the game? While each headless we kill is going to give us one of the spirit fall items, you could say the spirit falls are infinite versions of the sugars, as in they don't get consumed on use, they use spirit emblems instead. So we have one for extra damage, one for extra posture, one for extra vitality, one for better stealth, and the fifth and final one is going to be Yasharikus, which halves our HP temporarily for a big boost in attack power. So now we know what we're getting for killing these, let's jump into the locations of each of the headless. The first one, as most of you have probably already found in this game, is very early on. We can find them as early as Ashina outskirts near the stairway idol. If we go past where we fought the chained ogre mini boss, and then instead of continuing forwards and going down towards the first time we encounter the great serpent, we're going to take a right and soon we'll come across this dark cave, which we can also link back up to the stairway idol if we wish to. Also it's worth noting that from this cave you can actually access the bell demon very early on in the game. And in this cave is going to be where we can fight the first headless. Now to fight the headless, as most of you probably already know, you're going to want divine confetti to deal some real damage, as well as using pacifying agents to reduce the terror build up. Now these fights against the headless can be kind of tough for the simple fact that we need consumables pretty much to be able to fight them efficiently. And on top of that, in most of them, there's going to be this fog in the arenas, which heavily slows us down, preventing us from sprinting. This is especially annoying when they disappear, we need to get away from them to avoid getting hit by the grab attack. I'm sure there's many ways to avoid this, but the most easy way I found of avoiding getting grabbed is every time he disappears, simply start jumping away as quickly as possible and he shouldn't catch up to you. So this first one is going to give us the Echo's Spirit Fall. This is going to be the one that boosts our attack damage. The second headless we'll be able to face in the game is going to be once we get to the hidden forest in the Ashen Adepts. Almost immediately after the idol, we want to drop down and go to the left. And here we'll find the headless just chilling in a corner of the forest. It's definitely recommended to first kill the Miss Noble to clear out all the mist for this fight. It's also worth noting that if you are having a tough time against these and you're late game, if you have the Malcontents Finger Whistle Prosthetic Tool upgrade, you can stagger the headless up to three times in the fight. This helps a lot combined with the fact that if you get enough hits in while using the Divine Confetti, the headless will stagger, clearing out all the mist in the area, allowing you to move again freely. This headless is going to drop us the Gachian Spirit Fall. I also apologize if I'm pronouncing these completely wrong, by the way. Now for the final three headless, we are going to need the Mibu Breathing Technique, which will allow us to dive underwater. Two of them are actually going to be fights underwater, and one of them we simply need the diving technique to access the cave. So once we have the Mibu breathing technique, we want to go to the Sunken Valley first idol. And from here, instead of dropping down, we want to turn around and jump across to the platform that has the two riflemen on it, and then jump up to the left, and then shimmy across the thin pathway. Here we're going to drop down and it will say we're back in the Ashen Outskirts. And what looks like a dead end when we get to this pond, if we have the Mibu Breathing Technique, we'll be able to swim underneath and then when we resurface at the other end of the pond, and this is where we're going to find our third headless mini boss. Once we defeat this one, we'll be getting the Gokan's Spirit Fall. Now the final two headless are going to be the ones we actually fight underwater, which is kind of a cool concept considering other than fish, there's not really many enemies we kill from underwater. One of them we can find by going to the old grave idol here in Ashina Castle and then backtracking until we get to the moat of the castle. If, if we dive in to the left, we'll be able to find the headless on the bottom of the moat. Fighting the headless underwater has its advantages and disadvantage. The advantage is that they only get one HP bar, so we only have to perform one death blow on them to kill them. The disadvantage would be that we can't rebuff with the divine confetti while underwater, so we'll need to resurface if we want to rebuff. Defeating this headless will give us the Ungo's Spirit Fall. As for the final headless mini boss fight, we're going to head to the Fountainhead Palace. It doesn't really matter too much what idol you go from, there's two or three that are kind of close to it anyway, but essentially we want to get as close to the area we're heading to before we actually buff, just to make sure we get time to swim down and kill them. I say them because even though there's really only one headless remaining, there's also going to be an apparition phantom type clone of the headless here underwater, fighting alongside the main headless. There's enough distance between them to be able to handle the apparition kind of comfortably without the main headless getting too much in the way. Before you get time to kill both of them, you'll most likely have to resurface at least once to rebuff, and then simply swim back down and kill the other one. This will reward you with the Yashariku Spirit Fall. So that's pretty much all there is to the headless mini boss fights in Sekiro. If you have any extra tips you'd like to leave about the headless fights, something you thought made these fights a lot easier, please do leave them in the comments down below. I'm sure many other players will highly appreciate it. So if you did find this video helpful, don't forget that thumbs up button, subscribe for more content coming very soon, and we'll see you next time.